Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Are we good on audio? Great. Hi, this is 10 minutes, so we're going to have to move really, really fast. Hi, my name is Tainzi. We don't have time for who I am, but you'll find out later. Now, Netbox, you got it. Now what? 10 minutes of madness, or as I like to call it, just put the fries in the bag, man. All right. We can talk all day about all kinds of things that you can do with all kinds of automation tools, but the bottom half of the class, you know, the bottom 10, 20%, let's talk a little bit about what you can do day one without having all the fancy architecture in the world. So we're going to go over how to pick a network software tooth. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Uh, we do what we do after installation, how we get data into it, fun starter projects, and of course, you know, some public service announcements. So you get to pick a network source of truth. Great. I'm a neckbox man. As you can imagine, I have some, you know, tendencies. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But, of course, there is a lot of stuff going on. You could go back to Excel. You could use a database. You can do whatever you want. I'm not a cop, right? But we do have a choice now. Between two middle-aged white men, I get to pick my daddy. So this is going to be great. <laughs> But much like your American college students, uh, you know, it's always good to experiment a little bit. <laughs> now, moving on. There's stuff you can add on to the environment, like NetOS that is just an on-top thing. They're kind of cool guys. I talked to them. They're wonderful people. Excel might get a little bit jealous of the graphs and all that stuff that they're doing. It was perfect, but no, you just had to blow it up, you and your pride and your ego. You just had to be the man. If you'd done your job, known your place, we'd all be fine right now. And it's not like Excel has a big brother or anything, you know, waiting in the back, you know, oh, you're doing graphs? All right, let's have a talk about that. They do a lot of other value-added stuff, like end-of-life stuff. They're very cool. Now, how do we get good data into Netbox? That's kind of one of the big questions. You can do auto magic, or you can do it by hand. Well, if you do it by hand, you're going to be sitting around going, three men died trying to populate this netbox by hand, and you're not going to be doing well, right? So you're going to start day one. You're going to start complaining. I think I'm getting the black lung pop. It's not very well ventilated down there. For Christ's sake, Derek, but down there one day. Day one, you're going to be complaining about the black lung. So. Hard part is keeping sync, right? It's no problem for anybody to show up and start you know, pumping any random information into your source of truth. And you don't need to do all the data that's available. In fact, go figure out what your business needs are. Again, put the fries in the bag, man. I do it, you do it. I want to over-architect your stuff, you want to do it too. But I got to put the fries in the bag because that's what the business is about, you know? All right. So data, it depends. We can talk about upstream, downstream, leading fields like serial numbers, trailing fields. You know, I get those back into the source of truth or, you know, I don't, I'm not even going to touch on that. There's a whole team talking about definition stuff. I'm not going to muddy the waters. All right. Mm. Level one. So what we can do is we can do scripts locally. You can do some pandas, some DuckDB, have a good time. Problem is the API key sharing. You can, there are solutions for every problem. Like you could all run your own scripts anywhere, but you know, for repeatability and API sharing, and it's not great, right? We want something better. Finding cron jobs, taking that local script, putting it on a server somewhere. I've had to hunt down cron jobs in live customer environments. It's not fun, okay? It's not fun. You don't know when it's gonna fire. You don't know when it's gonna break. You decommission something, and then 30 days later, then it fails because some script couldn't run. Don't do the random car jobs anywhere. So level two, again, I'm not telling you to do this stuff. I'm saying it's an option. I've seen it done. You could put it directly into Netbox, right? You can do the reoccurring thing, have it scheduled, you know, have some sort of uh, basic workflow where you pull in some stuff, update some fields. Nice and easy. You have put the <laughs> you have just put the fries in the bag, man. And you're not, you know, you're not going to go to Autocon and be like, I architected the greatest system in the world, man. But you got some value for the business and you moved quickly. And then I'm giving you permission to go to bed and feel good about yourself if you do that. Great. But if you do it on that box, you're going to have a kind of a mid experience when it comes to the API. It's going to be hard to do pre and post testing. And securing the API keys, again, is going to be kind of a pain. So, a uh, side note, a friend of mine didn't know that he could do this, so I just wanted to highlight, you can put Jinja templates directly into Netbox in Python scripts, and that way you have the data of the drop-down fields, and you can put that in the thing. It's, it's beautiful. It's easy. So dollar store DAG. Instead of installing a fancy DAG system, you can just do a dollar store one. What do I mean by this? The output of the first script you run gives you the URL for the second step. Why would you do that? And you can pre-populate the field, so you can have stuff I did here affect stuff I did over there. One of those use cases is, I rented equipment from the inventory, and then I have to return it back in the service ticket. And you can have the little URL be ready. And then you can finish the process, right? Again, not telling you to do this, but it's an option, and I've seen it done. 
BGP peering as well. By the way, quick peering, uh, quick BGP question for everybody. Is it pronounced a AS to AS or is it pronounced ass to ass? I'm not quite sure because whenever I, you know, decommission a peering, I always go AS to AS, dust to dust. But uh, hope I'm pronouncing that right. Third party option, you know, you're trying to get data in. You're going to have an IKEA moment, right? I love IP Fabric. I love a lot of these vendors. They're doing good stuff, right? But they don't have a concept of tenancy sometimes if I have shared equipment. So I got to do something custom to get the tenancy information right. That's what we're talking about in level four. OK, so you don't know how long it took to get that graphic working, dude. Uh, so we have the data coming in from AVIC, which is just think of that as an SMB collector, very basic. And then we're using that info to populate Netbox. So it's coming from devices to the monitoring thing to Netbox. This is not endorsement to AVIC. The IPI is read only. Come at me, bros. Um, so we're going to get the data. We care about some device names of serial. Pretty basic. So we're going to do some Daxter, OK? Daxter's kind of cool. We're going to do uh, some AVIC Daxter stuff. So we're going to get the information from AVIC about the network devices in the environment. We're going to populate Netbox with it, and we're going to do some data transformations. And we're going to do some SQL checks, and we're going to do some DuckDB and some Pandas and some visualizations, whatever you want to do, right? And we're going to put in some checks. This is the most important part, right? You're going to check if there's Icelandic letters in the name. You're going to check if there's null values, all kinds of stuff to ensure data hygiene. We don't have time to talk about DuckTB, but that's a really good QR code that you're going to learn about DuckTB, Daxter, and it's an amazing pipeline, man. I'm super happy with it. All right, so let's talk about constraints on the network source of truth, right? We got Netbox, we got InfraHub, we got all these things, right? Some of them have lines drawn on the image. You can color inside the lines. You can color outside the lights. You can make any of these pictures on any one of these. There are trade-offs. There's complexity, right? You can also just you know, build your own by going to Postgres, you know, chop down wood. But I love Netbox, but there are limits, right? You know, if you try to do layer seven, you know, firewalling stuff or you know, out of the box, doesn't support it, right? VPN models, kind of VRF models, not really supporting eVPN and all that stuff. Again, most of you probably won't need that stuff. So, you end up with uh, Dinesh saying to you, everybody, everybody does end up doing their own thing. So that's where the customization and the strength comes in. Like, I'm in the first camp. I'm in core plus custom fields. That's where I live. I don't have any plugins in production. You can add plugins. You can do Git, YAML, but then you're splitting state across two systems, which is OK. You know, you do you. And of course, then we can do the custom DB thing uh, to the side, which is kind of where people end up half the time. And I'm not going to tell you what to do. You know, there's trade-offs, but you can do a lot out of the box. And there's, of course, the real question. How do I get emoji support inside of my source of truth, right? Well, unfortunately, InfraHub just smack dab won that thing because you can't search for emojis right now in that box. 4.1, last time I tested. Why is Steiny testing it? Is it because he's a silly man? No. Language support is important. Chinese characters, that sort of thing, non-English characters, you test it with emojis. UTF works. UTF-8, sorry, works. You're pretty good most of the time. Proactive monitoring. So one of the things, this is kind of one of those side projects, because this is how I got this talk in, and not just to slam on all the vendors. Uh, research monitoring, you can do some Grafana. So we're going to monitor and see what's going on in Grafana, be able to look inside of Netbox, and with one plugin, no persistent state, nothing time series, right? We're just going to monitor that the VLAN utilization or the prefix utilization is really reaching 50%, 80%. Doesn't matter, right? And this is something you can do in an afternoon, and you got some real value there. And then the engineers won't come complain. We're out of VLANs in the allocation pool. You know, you're going to know in advance. You're kind of cool that way. So public service announcements. We don't have time to talk about the regex stuff, but regex is hard. If you think it's not hard, it's hard. Trust me. Don't use it to filter emails. OK, book recommendations. Uh, Network programmability, great book. One problem is one section. Using the proposed architecture, you will be able to replace any tool with a new one when the necessity arises. That's a lie. Have you tried stopping a train that's moving with your bare hands? You're going to get crushed, OK? So as soon as you commit to a stack, other than that, great book. Chapter 14 is great. Thumb through the rest of it. This one is also great. I'm reading it right now. Some podcast recommendations. Again, you're going to read this all on the slide deck that I'm going to send you later. Uh, Network Automation Landscape, pretty good setup, pretty uh, nice place that we got started together. You can keep a look at all the wonderful projects that are happening. And you're going to be able to know what the hip cool kids are using, right? So uh, wow, the formatting got weird on that one. Uh, we're going to have to have a chat. But uh, yeah, they say I never meet your heroes, but you all got to meet me this time. And uh, you're doing great. But I uh, kind of lost one of my heroes this year, and probably some of you as well. So Nick passed away, and uh, 
that's been kind of a hard blow for everyone in the community. Uh, you know, he's been one of those uh, guys producing the great routing content and then the great automation content. So it's going to be really hard, to, and uh, we really miss that guy because uh, that's the reason I'm on, why I'm on this stage. Uh, he got me into routing, and he got me into automation. So, yeah, I'm gonna, just going to close up because I'm 15 seconds over, and sometimes we don't know when we run out of time like I have right now. So if we could just all try to live, with our, <laughs> live our lives with the dignity and grace that Nick had, we'd be doing a lot better as a community. But uh, I'm going to leave you with the last thing that Nick told me. This is the really good piece of advice that he gave me, and that was... Uh, uh, Steinze, uh, I was complaining about AIs and errors and all that stuff, the LLMs, and he said, well, you know, Steinze, uh all technology can give you the wrong answer sometimes, but sometimes it can give you the right answer, and that's really exciting. Thank you.